And back here at uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway as uh, qualifying is over and everything is sort of calming down. We had the big week, of course, with the Hall of Fame and we also have a movie coming up on the 30 for 30 that involves NASCAR, and it's the story of Tim Richmond. Let's give you a little sneak preview. It's coming up on Tuesday night. The good old boys personified stock car racing. It was born in the rural South. His roots were in the rural South. His roots were very much a part of the Scots-Irish culture of the South. What I thought would be great is if we had somebody that was totally different than that culture to come in and rouse the fans. Here comes the cat. He looks like he's right out of east of Eden and New York City, Greenwich Village. And I thought, this is perfect. <laughs> I could just as well live in a tent someplace, uh, but I'd rather if I had the money to, to live on some yacht someplace and have a, maybe a Learjet. Back in 1986, it was cowboy hats, big belt buckles, and it was not a trendy New York jet set sport. Tim Richmond, you know, in 1986, you know, lived on a boat in Fort Lauderdale, had an apartment in New York, or silk suits. Tim was different in that Tim was a cosmopolitan man. NASCAR had never had a cosmopolitan driver. Tim Richmond epitomized the cosmopolitan man of the 80s. All right. I, I remember my moments with him. I was working at, at Pit Lane in uh, R Riverside, and uh, he just he blew the field away. As, it was his second race back after coming off of his illness. What about the memories from you guys? This, this, he could drive. Hey, that's the thing. You can talk about everything you want about his life outside the racetrack, but the fact was that this guy could wheel a race car better than most everybody that I'd seen. I mean, it was just incredible the things that he could do. I enjoyed racing with him. I enjoyed talking with him. He was just a, a fun guy to be around, but uh, when he got on the racetrack, he was serious, and yeah, I mean, the places that he won and did well were some of the most difficult places we went to. And yeah, he's had so much confidence, and he had that cocky confidence coming in here, and like you said, he was he's so much different than, you know, the traditional heroes in NASCAR, but what a, you know, what a wheel man. I mean, he yeah. was, you know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of what Kyle Busch does on the racetrack. I mean, he just got, he has so much talent, or had so much talent, and, you know, he didn't mind going, you know, wheel to wheel with Earnhardt, and he'd, he'd take it to him. Well, and one of the guys that uh, is involved in the actual production is our own Dr. Jerry Punch. Doc, uh, some of your thoughts? You know, it was uh, it was a pleasure knowing Tim. I mean, you guys talk about all the great talents he had on the track. I remember Harry Hyde one time talking about how Tim wrecked a car in the early laps at Pocono and came back and drove it through the field and won the race. They never had any idea that the frame on that car was bent. And the frame was bent so badly, he said probably no one else could have driven the car. Not only did he win the race, he beat Dale Earnhardt Sr. to get that win on a very tough track at Pocono. The first time I met Tim Richmond, uh, Rick Hendrick had asked me uh, to talk with him about possibly getting a physical and allowing him to come race in NASCAR. So Tim called me one night. I was working in the ER late one night. He called me from a party. He was with Belushi and Aykroyd out in Malibu Beach, California, about midnight, Eastern time, which is 3 o'clock, um, I mean, the earlier West Coast time. And he said, I want a physical. I said, if you're serious, get on a red eye and come to the East Coast, and I'll talk with you tomorrow. And guess what he did? That's how much he wanted to be a part of NASCAR. And the story that you're going to see on Tuesday night chronicles uh, a very proud family, a very talented driver, and a tragedy that surrounded uh, how his life ended battling AIDS and, and illness. So it was very, very tough uh, to do that and talk about someone who had so much talent and so much potential. I know, Tim Brewer, you were at the uh, at the, the, uh, the audition, or I guess at the premiere on Tuesday night, and you actually got to see the movie. I have not been able to see the finished product as of yet. What do you think? Jerry, I think it was a great tribute to Tim Richmond and the family. But Tim Richmond, he was a he was a great guy. And like DJ says, there was no better guy on the racetrack. I mean, you know, he made Dale Earnhardt pull his hair out, literally. But, you know, fond memories of Tim here at Charlotte. We were a lot of situations like like Jeff Gordon was tonight. We weren't very good in practice. I remember looking down in turn three one time, and I could read Old Milwaukee on the hood of my race car. And I told Harold Elliott, I said, he wrecked. 
but he turned it down pit road, come in, we made some changes, went back, tuned it up a little bit, and Richmond came out and sat on the pole. But uh, that time we got a little bit of cash for it and turned around, and Tim, he got a brand new T-Bird that had 15,000 miles on it and cigarette burns in the seat. And he wasn't a real happy camper about that, but uh, he and Humphy got that straightened out the next day. But those were fond memories here in Charlotte with Tim. Marty? All right, thanks, Tim. And, of course, you'll see it on 30 for 30, and it'll be Tuesday night, 8 p.m. on ESPN. It uh, clears up a lot of misperceptions. It deals with uh, all the, the hard issues as well, and uh, I think it's going to be an hour well spent.